Hello and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by ZappySys. In this video we're going to cover how you can use a custom ODBC driver to connect to JSON data. You know you can connect directly to a JSON file or you can even connect to a REST API that returns JSON data. If your API doesn't return JSON data don't worry ZappySys has some other custom drivers that can connect to XML or CSV but this video is all about JSON. As always, this is a custom driver you'll be able to use once you download and install the ODBC Power Pack, which you can get directly from zappysys.com, hovering over products, ODBC Power Pack, and download the free trial. And don't worry, I'll be sure to post a link for this in the description below. Okay, so once you have the Power Pack installed, so I'm going to just search for the Gateway Configuration Tool. And I'm going to allow it to make changes and up pops the configuration tool. The first thing you'll want to do is hop over to the users tab and if you don't have any users created already just add a login make sure the passwords the same and you're gonna need at least one administrator. I already have those two users so I'm gonna stick with those and also be sure to go to the network settings tab and add a firewall rule so that other machines from the local network can reach the gateway on port 5000. There we go. Other than that, we'll just hop back over to the data sources tab and make a new data source. So I'm going to click add. I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it ZS Gateway. And I'm going to use the ZappySys JSON driver. First thing is, you'll probably notice there's a radio button for simple view or advanced view. So if you choose the advanced view, you'll be able to see properties in this format. And you can search for properties if you know the name of. But I'm not going to use this view. I'm just going to use the very simple view. So like I mentioned, you can connect directly to a JSON file if you have one, let's say, on your machine somewhere and you know where it is, you can specify that. Um, you know, if you have multiple files and they're all in the same format, you can add an asterisk and you can load uh, multiple at once. I'm just going to use uh, an API because that's what I think is really cool about this driver. And I already have this URL copied on my clipboard so I'm going to paste it in there and notice you'll see some special configuration pop up below. So the first thing to specify is the connection type and that's usually going to require some user credentials. So I'm using a very simple API. Yours might be very complex and specific to your needs. So always, always, always refer to your API documentation for how to manage your connection, especially for things like credentials or authentication. You might be using HTTP and you can click the continue button to specify, oh, is it a user ID and password or do we need dynamic two-step tokens? You know, some are use OAuth, so you can click that and then manage your custom OAuth settings. This is going to be very specific to your needs. I'm just doing a very basic example that has no credentials, so I'm going to stick to that. Next, you'll want to specify the request method. So if you're just getting data, you're probably going to use the get method. But suppose you're writing data to some data source. You can use the post method. And you can add parameters in the body by clicking this little edit pencil. And you can specify those. You can add parameters in the URL. You can even edit the headers if you want to do that using this little icon. Again, I'm just doing a very simple example, so I'm going to use the get method, and I'm going to select that. Something else that's really important is this array filter down here. So this is where the actual flattening happens. So I'm going to select this select filter option, and this is where you can see some arrays that are available from your API. You might be using a single array. You might be using a nested array. I'm just going to select this value option. But, you know, if you know the specific needs of the data hierarchy that you're looking for, feel free to specify that. But you don't have to. It's just totally optional. Just wanted to show you that it's there. So that's it. You know, this is a pretty simple example with basic settings. But that's really all you need to set up a connection 
and you can make sure everything works by clicking the test connection button. And there we go. It works. Great. So if you'd like, you can generate SQL that we'll say, sure, that represents this particular data connection. Uh, you can also copy the settings. So let's say you wanted to copy this driver and make another one on either this machine or maybe copy it to another machine. You can say copy settings, select the settings you'd like. There we go. Now it's on our clipboard. And then on the recipient machine or wherever you'd like to load them, use this little load settings option. Um, so super handy, super portable. Uh, and even with this generate SQL, you know, one thing I didn't mention is you can overwrite. So right now here it has our little URL for the API that we want to use. But if you'd like, you can overwrite this particular URL. So it doesn't only have to use this particular setting. You can overwrite things at runtime. That's a little handy feature to know. Okay, so we have a working connection. What data are we getting? Let's hop over to the preview tab. Straight away, you'll notice that it has a default query that we've already been populated with. So it may work out of the box for you like that. Um, you can try the preview data to see so, and there we go. We have some rows down here, but already I noticed that I'm asking for 100 rows and I'm only getting 20. So there may be some other configuration for things like pagination that we still need to specify. And we'll talk about that one in just a minute. But, you know, what if we want some other data? We can use this little drop down and pick another table that's available from our API and we see that some data is available. And this is handy if you don't know all of the columns in every table, or you're not sure where a column comes from, you can see which columns are in these endpoints. But you can also do other flexible things. So, you know, if you want to comment out a column, if you want to do a block comment for some columns, you know, if you want to give a column an alias, you can do that. And we'll do preview data again. So here we see, now we have state, and we see less columns. So just know you can use this little SQL editor to write some custom SQL for the data that you would like to return. If you're not sure of how to write that SQL, that's okay too. You can use this little query builder tool. So notice down here I have a new SQL editor, and as I click in modify these settings, you'll notice that other SQL is getting added. So then you can copy this SQL to the clipboard and now you have it. Or you can use some examples, you know, if you want to see specific examples. So there's lots of help here. Uh, you're not on your own on how to use this particular SQL editor. So again, I'm going to just preview data one more time. Nothing has really changed. And just know once you do preview the data, your metadata gets loaded for you automatically, so that's handy. But like I said earlier, I'm only getting 20 of the rows and I'm expecting or allowing up to 100. So how do we manage that? So to update the pagination config, I'm going to go back to the properties tab and now I'm going to go over to the pagination tab. And you'll notice there's a lot of options here for pagination, that's okay. I'll just remind you again to refer to your API documentation for your specific needs. But for this example, I'm going to hop down to this next linked cursor expression field and I'm going to click these three dots. So I know this API response that I'm getting includes the more data link in this particular API attribute. So I'm going to select that one. Now I'll go back to the preview tab and I'll click the preview button. And there we go, we have 91 rows, so we're getting more data than the initial 20 that we got. And this would appear that all 91 rows of the table are being returned because we didn't reach our maximum for 100. So that's cool. One other thing to mention has to do with performance. So again, you know, there's a lot of flexibility with these queries and what you can do. Let's say I'm going to use a custom SQL. I'm going to use this uh, view examples. And I'm going to do this group by limit order by option. So this will show you how to use these clauses. Okay, great. So here we have some custom SQL that uses a different URL. Like I said, this one's going to use the invoice table. So don't forget you can overwrite the URL at runtime. 
And you know, he's doing a sum with some order by clauses. So just know that, okay, we can preview this data. And there we go, we get some measures by country, which is exactly what this thing does. Uh, but you know, when you're doing all of this heavy lifting, it's gonna invoke the client side engine. It's gonna get data from the server. It does aggregates on the client side. So just know that there is this feature available but there might be some performance hits to keep in mind because notice this took almost a full second. So just know, I just wanted to point that out that you may notice some things with performance that you'll want to address. I'm also showing a lot of, even though this one does aggregates, it's a pretty simple SQL statement and it only uses uh, one table, whereas you're not limited to just something from one table. You can come into this custom objects tab and you can create new stored procedures. You can create new virtual tables that this DSM can use. You can even come over to this examples tab for some more SQL examples on how to use certain syntax, on how to join another URL, or if you want to look at array transformations, if you want to look at functions, if you need help with that. So just know that there's a lot of power and flexibility with the SQL editor, and it does a whole lot more than just getting data from one particular table. And you also notice back on the properties tab, we're only really looking at the settings tab and the pagination tab. You have advanced features for throttling, for error response. Down here you have data format, uh, pivoting columns. So there's a lot of advanced features that we didn't even cover. But that's really it. Once you have a working configuration, so I'll test it one more time. Yep, it works. So I'm going to say OK. And when you're ready, you can just click OK. And there we have it. We just created a new ODBC driver that connects to a JSON API data source. That's how easy it is and flexible it is to use this custom Zappysys JSON driver. Okay, so we've already covered how to create a gateway connection, how to create a user account for the gateway, how to make sure the firewall settings are configured, and how to connect to an API data source. Now let's see how to use the data from this particular gateway in a report in SSRS. I already have a report services project in Visual Studio, so I'm just gonna open that up. And I'll just create a new report. So I'm going to use the wizard and click next. We'll call this data source name data source one. That sounds good. Type SQL server will edit the connection. So don't forget we used localhost on port 5000. We're using the SQL server authentication and we're using the user we created in the gateway. And don't forget, our gateway is called ZS Gateway. So we're going to test the connection. It works. Awesome. So we'll say OK. We'll say OK. We'll click Next. And we'll stick with our same customers table. We want a tabular report. And We'll use all the columns. We'll say next, report name, report one, sure. We'll click finish. And just like that, you see report one is created. We have our data source is created with the connection string. It looks good. So let's just preview the output of the report. And there we have it. There's the data from that API connection. We could refresh this, and don't forget, this is a live connection to that API, so every time we refresh it, we're getting brand new data. I mean, we could do some other configuration or cosmetic tweaks to this report, obviously, but it's ready for deployment if that's what you would want to do with it. I mean, that's it. That's how easy it is to retrieve data from an API source with the custom Zappysys gateway service and then use it in SSRS. If you want to give it a try, but you haven't already downloaded the ODBC Power Pack yet, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget the link is in the description below. And be sure to subscribe to the Zappysys YouTube channel to get more tips and tricks like this and other updates in the future.